Hi, this is your Swapnil Bharatiya and welcome to a special edition of TFR Let's Talk here at KubeCon in Amsterdam, Netherlands. And today we have with us once again Hasib Badani, CEO and co-founder of Rapid Systems. Hasib, it's great to have you on the show here in person. Yeah, good to see you in person. Actually, for the first time, I think, and nice to uh, be here on the show again. Yeah, uh, and meeting in person is a totally different, you know, chemistry, totally different experience, which also brings me to the point of, you know, you are here at KubeCon. Uh, what kind of you know uh, experience you had here? What kind of conversations you had here? Over the last, I would say, six months, there's a trend I'm seeing in our industry, which is uh, we're going from uh, folks kind of doing Kubernetes in a in a sort of a vacuum, small teams doing Kubernetes or some dev team doing Kubernetes to the enterprise standardizing on Kubernetes. So the rise of platform engineering teams, right? This is what we talked about before, also offline. Uh, it's happening consistently. In fact, the the, re the reason why I walked in seven minutes late to this conversation is because I was with a customer who is trying to bring this central team concept together in a very, very large enterprise, and we spent time talking about how they would do it. This is a consistent trend. Platform engineering is a is a is a new concept in the in our in our industry, and it's a good idea for enterprises because they get to take the smartest people, put them in a room, and they come up with the right ideas and deliver real value to developers, so the developers can focus on writing applications. This this was always going to happen. The question was when, Swapna. And the fact that it's happening now speaks to the maturity of Kubernetes, right? And the adoption of Kubernetes in the enterprise. This is great. And when you do talk about platform engineering, uh, how different is it, uh, in your opinion, from DevOps? Uh, because you know DevOps is here, it will stay there. But I think as the organizations evolve over time, they do have to embrace platform engineering approach. But how different is it from your perspective? So here's what I'm seeing. You know, what I what I think perhaps is not as important as what I'm seeing. I'll, I'll talk about that. So I'm finding that the platform engineering teams seem to be becoming the owners of the infrastructure. Right? So the landing zone in the cloud, the Kubernetes namespace, that's that's the function that they are adopting. So they're building sort of these environments for developers. Then separately, there are DevOps organizations that are focused on the deployment of the applications. So they own the pipelines, right? The CD platform and potentially the CI platform. Uh, they own the the backstage, right? So the inter the, so the IDP for the developers is owned by the DevOps organizations in some cases, uh, uh, and this is how lines are being drawn: infrastructure versus application delivery. And then the developers are then you know sort of kind of customers of both DevOps and platform engineering, right? And the more I think about it, I mean, it seems like a really good idea. Right, so you create kind of this triumvirate of developers and DevOps and platform engineering. Um, I think this is a good way to allocate resources for enterprises, where they can actually make fastest progress with the fewer number of people. Because look, the biggest problem in the industry is not platform engineering versus DevOps. It continues to be a skill set problem. Right? We just don't have enough people. So let's specialize. Making the few people we have do everything that is unfair on our on our team members. Right? Let them specialize. Some people want to focus on CI/CD. Let them do that. Some people really enjoy writing automation for for cloud de deployments. Let them do that. And then some some people write applications. That's what actually makes money. We are here at KubeCon uh, from once again Rafa's perspective. Uh, uh, when we look at the the emergence of KubeCon, it's like new technology. But now when we look at hey, it's it's quite old because in today's world, you know, technology is immersed so quickly. What kind of adoption you are seeing of you know platform engineering approach, uh, cloud native approach, Kubernetes in the enterprise space? Um, of course, you know when we walk around, it looks like you know all the big vendors, small players, they're all using Kubernetes, all these technologies in production. So that is not even the question now. But what kind of adoption you're seeing, and when this adoption grows, you know companies start running into problems. You know, cost is becoming a big challenge. You know, cloud cost because of Potential recession, layoffs, teams are getting smaller. So, so let's talk about the adoption in the enterprise space and what kind of challenges enterprises are seeing when they're adopting these technologies. Sure, we've been coming to KubeCon for a long time, a really long time at this point, and because we are in it, we feel like it's been around forever. I would say that true enterprise adoption of Kubernetes happened at some point in the last eighteen months or so, for the majority of the world. Yes, there's some shops who've been doing this for five, six, seven years. Yes, of course they are. But for the majority of the world, it's new. It's still very new. Uh, for the developers in those same companies, it's actually not new. They've been working with Kubernetes a long time. But for, you know, generally speaking, the IT function, right? Platform engineering is a, is a subset of IT. Uh, this is a new concept. This is maybe a year to a year and a half old. So I think they're also learning 
what to do, what not to do. Right? So, so that, to me, is, a, is adoption. Yes, it seems it's been here forever. It's new. We are, at best, in our second innings uh, of, uh, of uh, Kubernetes. Uh, but then in terms of challenges, the challenges are arising because we think it's mature, but actually it's new. Right? So we all think that, well, we've been doing this long enough, so all the things that should have been learned, all the lessons that should have been learned, they have been learned already. No. We're learning them now because now people are taking real applications to production and then they find all kinds of challenges. And uh, well, then they are learning on the job, right? And that actually is the biggest challenge I see in, in, in enterprise. Um, they don't know what they don't know till they hit these crazy problems. And then the you know, leadership is saying, hey, maybe we should um, look at options that are off the shelf for some of the problems that we're trying to solve. And that is, by the way, very, very good, right? That, again, speaks to maturity. When IT functions start buying technologies versus you know, letting people tinker, this is how IT works, right? That's when you know IT feels that this is really mission critical. I need to put some governance around this. I need guardrails around this. That it feels like it's constricting. Actually, it's great. It means that this is serious, right? Enterprises, if it's a serious thing, they're not going to just let you do whatever you want, right? They're going to want to have some control over it. And control doesn't mean a bad thing, right? And the, the, I find that the, the real beauty of our industry is that this, this, these people learn so fast, right? So now enterprises say, I want control. So they said, no problem. We'll give you control, but then we'll build the best possible developer interface, backstage. Behind backstage, there's all this control that is possible in our world. So, so this, this is how, in my opinion, the market is moving. Now, when we go back to Rafa's number, you folks, what role are you folks playing in this space? Mm -hmm. So our job is actually quite simple. You adopt Kubernetes, and as an enterprise, you have an expectation of management, governance, controls, guardrails, right, these kinds of things. That's what we do for our customers. Uh, the analogy that I use with my customers is, look, back in the day when we were using VMs, right? so from VMware, you would buy a stack, which would have VSXi, which is the, you know, sort of the hypervisor, which is arguably like the orchestrator, right, In, uh, uh, thematically. And then you would have vSphere, vCenter to manage. So Kubernetes is thematically, not technically, but thematically like, a, you know, ESXi, right, because it's an orchestration engine. So the question is, what is your vSphere strategy? Or what's your vCenter strategy for Kubernetes? Right. Well, today the strategy is every enterprise is building one, right? So what is it that they're building? They're, building, they're solving for multi-tenancy, access management, audits, provisioning of clusters, add-on management, policies for Kubernetes, network policies that is a different problem. Uh, how, do I have visibility everywhere? Do I have the right dashboards for the right people? Oh, by the way, I need to do this across multiple clouds. So I want to use EKS and EKS and GKE, so that which means I may have to build three different sets of tools to build these things and I have to upgrade them. And This is a lot of work, right? This is on top of Kubernetes. Rafi is not a Kubernetes company. Rafi is a Kubernetes management company. That's the problem we solve for our customers. And the interesting part is Swapnil, that if Rafi doesn't exist, and this is a conversation we have a lot, right? Whether you buy from me or not, you're going to solve this problem anyway. That is not up for discussion that you have to do these things. You're an enterprise. You have to do these things. The question is, how will you get there? There are two paths in front of you. You can go down this journey, and uh, it's, a, it's a perilous journey. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of people. Or you can buy the best practices framework that we sell as a product. And you can be up and running with the right governance and the right control and the right automation, most importantly, now. And uh, we have a lot of very heavy customers. And who are these customers? Who do you like know? What is the ecosystem that you are serving? Yeah. So we have a, a very large number of uh, financial services customers. Uh, we have a number of healthcare sort of you know, pharma customers. And then we have a bunch of high-tech customers on the platform. What's really interesting about these customers is there's one thing that is common across all of them, which is the customer for us is consistently a platform engineering team. And then they have internal customers. My customer has multiple customers. My customer is not the developer. My customer's customer is the developer. So we understand what problem we're solving for and for whom. My customer's platform engineering, they have to solve for multi-tenancy. They have to solve for repeat, repetition in, in, in configuration management. They need for the standardization. Some of their customers are in AWS. Some of their customers are in Azure. They can't say no. You have to solve for all this. When you have clarity on your, your ICP, your, your, your buyer, uh, a lot of things become very obvious to you. What do you have to build? Our roadmap is easy. We, these people tell us what they want, and we just build it for them. It's as if 
they they have a new person on their team. I said this a lot, so now. It's like you hired a guy named Rafe. You're hiring people, you hired a guy named Rafe. But this guy named Rafe comes with 200 people, right? And we're gonna bring all this automation governance that you would have solved for anyway. And when you're talking about these industries, some of these industries are very well regulated, they have to, so does, you know, Rafe play any role in there as well, or that is outside the scope? Yeah, I mean, we're not a compliance company per se, but in terms of configuration, management, and standardization, that these things help, right? So one of the things that enterprises do is, you know, they have a center of excellence organization, right? So, you know, it's got people from DevOps and development and security and platform, and these folks come together and come up with a, a blueprint of what things must run on a cluster, who has access to what, I want to make sure people can see this versus that. So the, the implementation of those things is done with Rafi's platform. So, so we're just the doer, right? I mean, in the grand scheme of things, right? they create the policies because we, we don't create policies. Our enterprises, customers know, they know exactly what they need. But then the manifestation of their, of their asks, right? Rafi is the tooling that they use to apply those in the Kubernetes context. And that's our job. Right? We understand what our job is, we're the doer, right? And we do it really, really, really well. And we do it as a SaaS product. If you look at Rafa systems, if you see, you know, the, as you said, the adoption is in the phase two, uh, what does it mean for the company? What are the things in your pipeline? What are the things when you come to these events, when you, as you said, these are not your direct customers, but you know, they give you the pulse, you know, where the industry is heading. So what does it mean for Rafa? What kind of things we should be looking at when we look at your company? Yeah. So there's two demos we're doing this week uh, that are new ideas for us. And we, you know, we, we, we're doing them because we want feedback from the, from the, from the developer customer, right? Uh, one is we built a number of backstage plugins. And uh, we're showing them because, yeah, we want to make sure because at the end of the day, they'll be the one using it. They will not be the ones buying from us, but their platform engineering team will be buying from us, but they'll be the ones using it. Are we doing all the right things? I hope we are. And if we're not, no problem. We're going to go make it better, right? The second thing we're showing is what we call an environment manager. So the idea is that Okay, you build a Kubernetes cluster, but your application is not just in Kubernetes. You have RDS, you have Kinesis, you have a NAT gateway you have to set up, all these things that live around Kubernetes to make your application. Maybe use Lambda, I don't know. Right? So how do we help a platform team create a templatizable pipeline to deliver infrastructure? Like a full landing zone in one. How do you do that? Right? Kubernetes is a part of that. It's an important part, but it's, it's not the whole thing. It's one thing. So we want to start kind of thinking about a broader sort of cloud uh, landing zone concept that we can help our customers solve. This platform is designed to plug in nicely with Terraform Cloud or M0 or any of these sort of Terraform framework companies, which are, there, there are multiple of them and they're all doing very well. This should plug into that and help my customer, the platform team, deliver an end-to-end -end environment based on the identity of the user. If you're a Spring Boot developer, your environment is different. If you're a data scientist, your environment is different. But you should be able to go to a backstage uh, page and say, I need an environment. And the platform will know exactly what that means and just make it happen for you. So we're, we're, we're doing a preview right now. Usually we, we write new code, we keep it in preview for two or three months, and then we make it GA so we can get feedback. And uh, we're eager to get feedback. Right? So folks watching this, if you, if you wouldn't mind, please watch our uh, uh, demos of our environment manager platform. If you want to see a demo in a call, happy to do it. Uh, because I'm convinced that this is a problem. I see every enterprise struggling with this. Uh, maybe we can help. Hasib, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about the company, the whole you know evolution of the you know platform engineering and the, where the adoption is growing and what Rafa is planning. So thanks for sharing all those insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. I look forward to doing this again. Thank you for having me today. <laughs>